So we're controlling this prosthesis on an instant-by-instant -instant basis. So this is our robot arm. This is our training that we go through with our monkeys as they go through and try to learn how to use this robot. So they're using um, brain signals, so signals from their motor cortex that we um, pull out of, of wires into our system, and our computers then um, decode what it is that, that the monkey's intending to do and uh, drive the endpoint of this arm forward and backward and around through space. The monkeys have brain control over this robotic arm to uh, move it forward and grab a piece of fruit as it's presented and then bring it back to their mouth uh, to feed themselves. Incredible as it may seem, these monkeys learned to feed themselves with a robot arm that was being directly controlled by their brains, as if it was simply part of them. This is a biofeedback closed loop kind of experiment and that there's an automatic, almost an automatic learning that's going on um, where we're communicating with the animal by displaying uh, the behavior. So the robot arm moves or a cursor moves in virtual reality, that's information to the animal as to how well it's doing. Uh, it only gets a reward if it does this task correctly. So it wants to optimize its ability to be successful. So there's this instantaneous analysis going on incrementally through the movement. Uh, something in the conversation, something like, am I moving the correct way? If not, how do I correct it? And then you make an attempt to correct it and you say, did I improve it or make it worse? And then so this trial and error thing, eventually there's some kind of combination of events that, that improves the behavior and the animal is able to recognize that and use that repeatedly and that's how learning takes place. If a monkey could produce those signals without the need of moving, a human being in the future that cannot move could think about moving and somehow this type of technology one day could uh, help him or her enact the movements that she can no longer or he can no longer produce. That, that, that realization was instantaneous, you know, because you could see movement being generated, generated by the brain, sending 300 milliseconds to a robotic device without any muscle contraction happening. And, and the goal of the behavior was being achieved. These experiments opened the doors to even more innovative engineering, 